Hi, my name is Aaron Cannon, and I'm an accessibility consultant. I'm currently primarily working for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I wanted to talk about specifying the human language of HTML. This is not really a huge pressing issue in accessibility. It's definitely an issue, but not, not a big one. Um, and it's also not very techn technically difficult. Uh, but I think it is something that all good web designers should be cognizant of in their own work and should be sure to take care of just because it is such a simple fix and uh, yet can have such an impact on the user experience for disabled users. Let's say, for example, that a person who uses a screen reader uh, that they primarily browse Spanish web pages, okay? So they visit your website, which is written in English, and odds are pretty good that their screen reader is going to be set up to read Spanish by default, because that's what they usually read. So when they go to your web page, they're going to hear something like this. This is in English, but the screen alert in Spanish. So uh, it's reading the first paragraph on the page right underneath the heading. So let me let me play that one more time. This is in English, but the screen alert in Spanish. Now that's not generally how screen readers read English, and as you can probably guess, what it's doing is it's trying to read English with Spanish phonemes, which clearly doesn't cut it. Uh, and again, this is just because the language attribute is set wrong on this particular paragraph. Uh, and I'll show you the code in a moment. So let's go to another example. Let's say that you have on your primarily English website uh, just one passage that's in a foreign language. If a screen reader user is reading your web page and they come to that passage, now, that's obviously, again, doing just the opposite of what happened above. It's trying to read Spanish with English phonemes. So, again, it's it's not going to work. It's not intelligible. So you need to, uh, you know, obviously make sure that you tell the user when you switch languages. And the next example uh, has it done correctly. So um, I'll show you what it sounds like when, or I'll, I'll show you how it's supposed to sound. The Spanish word. Quiero means left quote, I want right quote in English. So the Spanish word quiero means I want in English. The Spanish word quiero means left quote, I want right quote in English. Screen readers ship, um, well, most screen readers, uh, the ones that I'm familiar with at least, uh, ship with a couple different languages. Not very many, but they have a few more uh, common European languages. Uh, obviously English, Spanish, French, uh, they have some Brazilian Portuguese, uh, and Italian, a couple others. So, uh, you're, you're somewhat limited because you don't have the, uh, the whole, uh, gamut of languages uh, available to you, but rather than worrying about what the screen reader does or doesn't support, uh, your best bet is just to simply mark up your code in the proper way and let the screen reader worry about it. If it can't read it in that, you know, if it doesn't have the um, synthesizer available to read it in the correct language, then you know, there's nothing you can do about that. So let's dig into the code now and just see how easy this is to implement. All right, so here we are in the code. And as you can see, the body tag has a language attribute on it, which specifies the default language for the document. And that, in this case, is English. However, if you go down here to the first paragraph, you see that we've specified an alternate language for this paragraph and this paragraph only. And that's perfectly legal. Basically what happens, you know, the thing to remember is that the uh, more deeply nested language attribute overrides any um, less deeply nested attributes. So if we go down to the second paragraph, that has no... Um, language attribute on it, so clearly it's going to default to the document uh, language, which is in this case again English. So if we go to the third paragraph, you'll see that once again the language attribute is specified as English, and uh, it's kind of pointless because it's not really doing anything. Um, it's just, you know, it, it would be English anyway because that's what the document default is, but nevertheless it doesn't hurt anything. So, 
on the next line you see we have um, in the Q tag we have the uh, language attribute on that Q tag specifying that the text within between the opening and closing tags are is to be Spanish and again that's perfectly valid because again it overrides all of the uh, less deeply nested uh, lang attributes so that's basically all there is to it um, now there are obviously specifications that go into a lot greater detail than I have here and um, I, you know I, I they're always uh, good reading for the uh, serious web designer but uh, for the most part this is really all you need to know one thing to be careful of is you don't want to go overboard when marking possibly foreign phrases or foreign words in your uh, English document. For example, I probably wouldn't mark uh, the word ado if it showed up in a, an English document and it was an English sentence and it wasn't, you know, quoting uh, and it wasn't, you know, specifically uh, giving a French word. So, j I mean, the reason for that is, well, a lot of people don't realize it, but uh, ado is actually in the dictionary, the English dictionary, and, and it's pretty much become uh, part of the English language. So, you know, I, again, you can overdo it and uh, change languages back and forth, but, you know, really there's, it's... Uh, not necessary. Um, just if you have something that is a clearly a foreign language quote, mark it up as such, and mark up the body of your documents as the you know mark their primary languages, and that's really all you need to worry about.